All right, all right. Welcome, everybody. Um, this is a fireside chat on inclusive banking. Uh, my name is Stefan Lavoie. I'm the Chief Community and Programs Officer for the Valuable 500. As an audio description, um, I am an aging white male with a, a silly mustache wearing a uh, blue blazer and a white shirt. And uh, with me today uh, is the wonderful uh, Penny Roberts, who is the co-founder of Bankability. Um, and is also the Director of Partnerships for uh, Bankability, and I will let uh, Penny introduce herself. Thank you very much, Stefan, and lovely to meet you in person after all this time. Um, yeah, that's right. Uh, my name is Penny, uh, short for Penelope, um, and um, I'm here because of my inspiration is my son, um, who is dyslexic autistic, and it became very clear three and a half years ago that he wasn't comfortable or able to use current banking apps. Um, so, after much research and um, more research, we decided that w to build the world's first um, online banking app and platform for people w to be accessible for di uh, disabled people. And, and so, uh, on that, I guess you can speak specifically to your son's experience, but more broadly, um, what are some of the accessibility barriers or challenges that you see a lot of financial institutions run into um, in their consumer-facing interfaces, whether they're apps or you know, their uh, online uh, interfaces as well? There's many. Um, a lack of choices, um, um, just causing frustration and barriers, um, lack of um, options and choices, really wrong language, um, d and just causing doubt and, and friction, really. Hmm. And so, uh, how does how do you see that affect consumers? Obviously, I mean, for folks who need to, use, because everybody, uh, especially ev everybody of a certain age, who is either making money or uh, has money to, to bank with, uh, needs to be able to access these platforms. So, how do you see this adversely affect co uh, consumers? I mean, I, I would imagine that you interface pretty directly with disabled consumers to, to get their opinions on things. Absolutely. We'll be working with disability charities to help design and build this product um, so they can be involved from the very, very outset. So, you know, we, we don't know everything. Um, they need to be involved to get it right. Um, it's going to take time. It's not going to happen in a couple of weeks. It's going to evolve. Um, but these people have a right to have an in independent life. And so let's talk a little bit more about bankability. Um, we heard the inspiration. We heard kind of a high-level um, description of what the app does. But specifically, if I'm a financial institution out there uh, looking to uh, use or co-opt it, how does it, how does it work? How do you approach uh, clients or financial institutions to help them uh, use this uh, use Okay. This app? Well, I'm not a techie, um, so I'll describe it in my way. Um, it's a little bit like being able, our customer being able to choose the right um, spectacle th specification and lenses to view and enable them to access the finances. So we're not a bank, we're an enabler. Um, and once the, um, the person has chosen their ideal preferences, they'll be fixed until they want to tweak them a bit. So that's why it's very, very different to anything that's already available. So um, I don't think we'll ever have two profiles the same because everyone's unique and they'll be able to choose whatever their disability is, the right way to access their finances. So a solution that speaks directly to access needs of a variety of different consumers. Um, going back to the financial institutions, obviously um, in different geographies, but globally I think that financial institutions have a mandate, both from a regulatory um, uh, lens as well as a, a social and, and moral and business imperative. So kind of talk about specifically in the UK context because uh, you're, you're, you're working and operating in the UK. Um, what, what do you see as key drivers for financial institutions to co-opt something like you know, bankability or to generally improve their accessibility? Um, a key focus right now would be the fact that the EAA is coming into force on the 28th of June next year and where all banks, oh, actually all businesses, not just banks, have to be accessible uh, digitally. So we're going to provide them with um, a white label version, if you like. So why, if they're building their own currently, they can continue to build their own, but we can give them an instant solution. Mm. And do you, in kind of, what are some of the in the conversations that you've had with financial institutions, obviously you've had uh, some success in, 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 in working with folks, you've had success in, in piloting this, this app with a number of different organizations. Um, but what do you see as kind of key barriers, despite all of these kind of 
imperatives, uh, these, these, these business cases for why they should be doing this. Banks are still very slow in, in adopting um, accessibility as a core feature of what they do. What do you see as internal barriers to that? Like, what, what, what do you see as, like, key stoppers for, for that momentum? Um, I think there's probably um, several. I think probably lack of awareness in some banks. Um, I think some banks maybe don't know what their customers' needs are. Um, legacy systems that are not very flexible. You can't just say, give it a try. Um, our our um, luxury is we're starting from scratch, and it'll be completely accessible from the outset. Um, which is a luxury now, but if you take um, banking as just the first use case, after that, this um, engine, this platform, um, will be applicable to any sector and any market globally. And going back to the use case, if I'm, if I'm a financial institution and I'm looking for an accessible solution for an app, for example, but I already have an app, how would you integrate that pre-existing app um, in a way that won't require uh, a ton more development dollars to be spent on, on the, the existing app itself. I believe it's called an SDT ca card. I'm um, getting technical with me again there. <laughs> um, we, the, the, there's a way they can actually just use our standalone or we can actually work behind their firewalls and be part of their existing app as well and enhance it if you like. Um, one's instant, one's one, the other will take a bit longer. But the answer is still yes. <laughs> and could you tell me a little bit, and and uh, you know, uh, could you tell me a little bit about some of the folks who've inspired this work, who've, who who have supported your work, and, and and how? Yeah, we have an absolutely amazing team of um, experts in, in accessibility and in fintech space and compliance, um, and the whole team to date have been working on a pro bono basis, which is just awesome um, because it resonates with them. They probably have a family member or friends that they know this will help. Hmm. And so to any financial institution listening, what is kind of the elevator pitch, so to speak, that you want to, you want to convey? Not you know, in terms of how it works, but how this positively impacts the ecosystem, how it improves reach and certainly uh, service to disabled consumers. Um, and then my second bit is, you know, within that argument, is there a case to be made for just improving usability in addition to just accessibility? Once we've um, launched bankability, in making it accessible for the people with, the, with most challenges, we're making it accessible for everyone. And so therefore, bankability is what the world needs. It just needs it. Um, what was the other question? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you kind of answered it right there, where, where you know, if you... If you had, if if I were, I don't know, a, a chief procurement person for a financial institution, how would you, what would you, how would you convey the value of the app? To okay, me? I think the most obvious point is, um, a, it's the right thing to do. Doing good feels good, um, but they're going to enable more customers to to access their products. You know, at the moment they're locked out, which is not very nice. Yeah. Yeah, and so I mean. Again, so for any financial institutions listening or anybody working in the fintech or, or financial services sector, um, know that there's um, a wonderful app in, in bankability, know that there is um, a ready-made solution for uh, banks who are looking to take that next step in accessibility to understand how to do it and to seamlessly integrate accessibility into what they're doing um, because it is the right thing to do because there are you know 1.3 billion consumers out there who need uh, this level of um, this level of support, uh, and um, and that's that's really it. I mean, I, I, yeah. It, yeah. Uh, well, I'm here at this wonderful conference. It's such an honour to be asked to, to come and speak here to find organisations who want to collaborate with us, um, invest in us to help bring this product to life as quickly as possible, um, and to you know to roll it out around the world. Awesome. Well, that's really all we have. Thanks, guys. <laughs>